Father, we thank you for the new. We thank you for a new year. And God, we just welcome your presence here. God, not that you need us to welcome you here or invite you because you're already here. But God, we do welcome your presence. God, we welcome you in a way that would change our hearts, that would change our lives, God, that we wouldn't just come into a new year with the same old wineskins, with the same old uh, us, Lord God. We, we come into the new year expecting you, expecting you to move in a great and mighty way in our lives. And so, Father, we just thank you for today. Those who are in the room, those who aren't in the room, God, we thank you for those who are still on holiday yet to come back. We pray for safe travels for every single person, and we just thank you for today in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen. amen. I don't know if you know it, but the Word of God activates your faith. Like the Word of God read, the Word of God activated in our life. It activates our faith to a point where we can start to believe that God is actually faithful. Like you imagine if God was actually faithful to everything you wanted right now. It would probably be a bad thing because you'd be all driving in Ferraris and Lamborghinis and all those things that you want, the, the mansions, all those sorts of things. Then you have to clean the house and oh, there's, there's a lot of, but what if I told you this morning that God is faithful to everything that you need? Maybe not just what you want, but God is faithful to everything that you need. Uh, and I believe at the start of this year, uh, I've, I've been praying into this year going, okay, God, as long as it's better than last year, it's got to be good. Like, was anyone the same as me, like thinking about last year? Last year, we, we, we labeled it go big, and then we went into restrictions and lockdowns and all that sort of stuff. How many know in the natural, we can, we can see things and, and just be disorientated or frustrated, but actually, supernaturally, God's got everything under control. I want to tell you, we're going to get a little bit of the same this year. Maybe not lockdowns, but a little bit of disorientation in the natural. There's going to be season uh, in your life this year that you may feel a little bit uncomfortable. You may feel a little bit dis disorientated, but actually as you stick to God and stick to His plan for your life, that is one of what, what's going to keep you moving forward into everything He has for you. And, and I love, I love uh, coming into a new year because you start talking about the new. Man, I, I believe that there's so much new. This is our, our, our sixth year that we're entering into uh, for Teddy and I and our boys living in Topor. And I'm really excited about this year. Um, for some, I've been, I've been sort of, you know, coming in and thinking, okay, God, what do I need to do this year? Uh, if you just put the title up, uh, Sam, this is what I really believe that God wants us to do this year, to draw in close. Okay, I really believe at the start of this year, this is what God wants. Not for us to be at a distance watching everyone else fulfill their call, but actually God wants us to draw in close to Him. Why? Because the Bible says that as we draw near to Him, He draws near to us. And I really believe that's a promise that we need to stand on this year, is that as we draw near to Him, He's going to draw near to us. Some of you may feel distant at the moment. But how about you try drawing near to Him? How about you try and just take one step to Him? Because one step in His direction is a thousand back towards you. Maybe you feel like a little bit of alone right now. Uh, holidays for some people can be a lonely time because everyone else has got family. Everyone else has disappeared and they've gone on big holidays, but I can't afford it. Or I, I don't have family to be around. I know it can be a really lonely time, but actually as you draw near to God, He's the one that won't let you down. He's the one that is closer than a brother. He's the one that is closer to you than anyone else can be. Can I encourage you this year, if you write anything on your fridge, write this, draw in close. Draw in close. If you want a title for the message, that's what it is. Draw in close. I really believe that God, God's presence this year wants to flow to us. It wants to flow in us, and it wants to flow through us. Not just the first two, although we want that. He, we want God to flow to us and in us because that's for us. But actually, God wants to flow through you this year. 
We're going to be unpacking in February our, our theme for the year, which is commissioned. We really believe that we are being sent out this year. We're not just a, a group of people that gather together to high five and, and make us, ourselves feel good. We're actually being sent out by God into our workplaces. We're, we're being sent out into our families because how many people here have got unsaved family members right now? See, they need us to be sent by God for them to understand that, that, that God is actually real. He, he exists. He loves us. He's not just the, loves the Christians that turn up to, to church on Sunday, but he loves every single one. My, my prayer this year for you is that you access everything that God has for you. See, God is not stingy. God is not withholding things from you. He has full access to you. And you have full access to him. And I want to tell you this morning that the, the key to heaven is Jesus. See, no one gets to the Father except through Jesus. And so every single one of us need to draw near to God so that we can access everything God has for us. Just ask your neighbor, do you want everything God has for you this year? I hope everyone nodded. Yes, I do. I do want everything God has. You know, just, um, just reflecting over the last couple of years, 2020 was an interesting year for probably everyone. You know, as I guess the world as we knew it went, it just came to a halt. And we were all stuck in our homes with our family. Some of us good things, some of us probably not so good thing. But Everything came to a halt, and I've just been reflecting over the last two years of, of lockdowns and not lockdowns and COVID and all those sorts of things, and, and I really felt like God said, it's like, it's like people feel locked out. It's like people feel locked out. Have you ever felt like this guy here? If you put that first image up. Have you ever felt like this guy? Or maybe you've seen it in the physical. You've locked your keys in the car. Yeah. I feel like some people have felt like this over the last two years. They've just been looking in the window at the keys that God has had for them or the vehicle that God said, drive this thing, but you've felt locked out. You've actually felt like you've got no access to go where God wanted you to because of situations outside of your control. See, the thing about getting locked out of a car is you can't go anywhere or you can't go anywhere as fast as you could you ever ran out of gas and you had to walk to find the nearest place or put your thumb out and try and wave someone down? For some, probably closer than others. But there's a feeling of, oh man, I, I just, I want to get there, but I, I can't right now because of these situations. And I feel like people have, 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 have been stuck in this place for maybe two years. And, and even this next image. You're just sitting outside the step going, oh man, I'm locked out of the house. I'm locked out of this place of security. I'm locked out of this place where I feel safe. And some of us actually feel like that. You've, you've locked yourself out or other people have caused you to be locked out of something or the promise that God has for you. Don't worry, it'll get better. <laughs> but for some of us, I feel like some of us are stuck in that place of we, we feel locked out. We feel locked out of the promise, we feel locked out of the things that, that God wants for us, but we feel like the keys are on the other side of a locked door. Have you ever been locked out of your emails or an app and it says one last attempt <laughs> and it breeds so much anxiety and it breeds so much fear and you're like, what is this flipping password that I've changed 17 times since my original? How it breeds frustration. It, when you're locked out of something, that's how people start to feel. You feel insecure or insecure. You feel frustrated. You feel anxiety. You feel all these things because you're locked out of the thing that God intended for you. That would, that would be frustrating for everyone if everyone was in that state. If we all just felt like we're, we're locked out where God, you said in 2020, and I was hoping for this, and then we went into lockdown, and it just messed everything up, and now I feel stuck. I feel locked out of this. But actually, in 2013, this guy called Bruno Mars, right, this guy here, 
He released a song, Locked Out of Heaven. He came up with this concept that, that was on the number one charts for like 20, 20 weeks or something. Some facts out there. He came up with this concept that actually we're all just locked out of heaven. God doesn't love us. We could, we could find love in other places because God doesn't love us. We're actually all locked out of heaven and we're not going to get there. And it became the number one hit. It brainwashed kids all across the world that actually we're probably locked out of heaven, so there's no point. There's no point searching for God because we're just locked out. He's disappointed in us anyway. He doesn't love us. He doesn't actually like us. Music, hey? Music. Who would have thought that Lucifer was the worship leader of heaven and he knows how to mess with you through the music of today? But what does society tell you? Just to give up. Here, have some drugs. Here, have some alcohol. Here, have something to to fill that void that you're feeling. Here's another relationship. Because we're all just locked out of heaven and we can't get there. Heaven is this place so far away. But today I want to talk to you about the kingdom of heaven and how close it is. I want to reiterate this morning and, and, and change all those mindsets that you're locked out of something that you're locked out of a promise, that you're locked out of heaven, that those are all lies from the enemy, that actually the kingdom of heaven is closer than you think. The kingdom of heaven is so close. And I'll I'll take you through some scriptures. Everyone say, yes, finally, scriptures. (laughs) See, in Matthew chapter 4, Four, verse 17, it says this, the kingdom of heaven is near. Mark chapter 1, verse 15, it says the kingdom of God is near. Uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 9, it says the, the, the kingdom of God is near, you know. Next. In the same way, when you see all these things taking place, you can know that the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God has arrived among you. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 says, But now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to Him through the blood of Jesus. You have been brought near to Him because of the price that was paid for you. You don't have to pay the price. The price was already paid for you. Can I say to you that heaven isn't this place far off that you are locked out of. It is actually nearer than you think. And and Jesus, every time he was here, he would always reiterate it. The kingdom of heaven is near. The kingdom of heaven is closer than you think. Stop thinking it's this place that you go to in eternity. Yes, it is. But actually, the kingdom of heaven is so much bigger than that. It's something that is a part of us that we can be a part of every single day of our lives. That's why looking at the start of this year, we need to draw in close. We need to understand that Jesus didn't just die for Joe Bloggs down the street. He died for you and I. And therefore, because of his death, the, the penalty for my sin, I have got access to heaven. One of the words for for God is Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus, God with us. Every single part of who God is is not distant. He desires relationship. He desires, uh, uh, desires intimacy. Desires is not a word. Just letting you know. The kingdom of God is closer than you think. Just say that to your neighbor. The kingdom of God is closer than you think. See, with with the kingdom of God being close, what we can be assured of is is three things, starting with the, the letter P. I know, fancy, yeah. Three things that the... We can be assured that he has promises for us. Because the kingdom of of God is near, we can be assured that his promises are there for us to access. Everything he's spoken, when you read the Bible and you see a promise to someone, you can actually access that as well and that can be a promise to you. 
The other thing that we can access is promotion. When the kingdom of God is near, it says that as we draw near to him, he draws near to us. But actually, as we seek first his kingdom, everything else will be added to us. That means promotion will come your way as you decrease, he increases. Promotion will come not because you're looking for it, not because you're striving for it, but actually because your one role this year is to seek first his kingdom. Your one job this year above everything else is to draw in close. How powerful would the church be if we just drew in close? It's like not just on Sundays we came like a a Tesla and plugged ourselves in and hyped this up and then went out again. No, every single day, Every single day, you are capable of reading the Bible for yourself. You are capable of praying for yourself. Yes, I'm, I'm, there's a lot in the corporate gatherings, and don't despise the gathering together. Don't go away from that. But actually, there's power when you can draw in close in the secret place. When you can process things for yourself in the secret place, that's when other platforms start to come and and the promotion comes. Not when you desire it. The third thing that when when the kingdom of God comes, and it's my favorite one, is you are guaranteed his presence. Above the other two, those that's my favorite one. You are guaranteed his presence. He will be with you everywhere you go. Like, how awesome is that? So next time you feel like you've locked your keys out of the the car, the house, you're, you're locked out of something and you feel like you can't access it, just remember, what is the key? Jesus. What is the key? Drawing near to him. Not drawing near to Netflix. Not drawing near to the things that just, you know, take your mind off the things of God but actually drawing near to God because he can pull you through. He can pull you out of everything that you're going through right now. I love the, uh, the prophetic statement that Joel made in Joel chapter 3, verse 18. Uh, it's, it's about the kingdom of God coming, and, and it says this, In that day the mountains will drip with new wine, and the hills will flow with milk. And the ravines of Judah will run with water. A fountain will flow out of the Lord's house and will water the valley of acacias. I was going to write Acacia Bay, but I thought not. Um, But I love this prophetic picture because when I read this, it jumped out to me. It's like, that's what this year's got to look like. That is what this year has got to look like. The mountains will drip with new wine. For some people, they hear wine and they think, toiling, I've got to press the grapes, I've got to do all this stuff to make wine, I've got to let it sit for a while just to get the best. This is a prophetic statement that you don't have to toil. You don't have to work for this new wine. You don't have to do anything for this new wine to flow, that this is a supernatural wine from heaven that would flow into your life this year. feel like it's getting hot in here. Because there's a new wine, not a, a wine that you've tasted before, not a wine that you've, you've pressed before in your own strength, but a supernatural wine that would come to you, your family, your workmates, like every single person that you come into contact with, this wine would just ooze out of you. And it doesn't come by stress. It doesn't come by, by trying to make it happen. It comes by drawing in close. New wine comes by proximity. You've got to be close to God for new wine to start to flow. The second part of that scripture, it says, and the hills will flow with milk. You're like, man, what a weird picture. But I've driven around the country this last two weeks, and I think it was on the way to Tauranga, we looked at this one field and it looked way too small for the amount of cows in that space. We were all like, wow, that's a lot of cows in that one space. 
But when I read the scripture, that's the picture that came to me, that, that the milk is going to flow from the hills, that actually the amount of cows that are going to produce out of that one hill is going to be plentiful. And so as we actually put ourselves on the, in the pastures of heaven, that f- the flourishing would just start to happen. Flourishing would be a natural progression in our life because of where we're situated. I didn't get a picture that the, the, the grass was starting to be squeezed and milk was flowing out of grass. No, I got a picture of where milk comes from naturally. But the reason why those cows have their udders full is because where they're grazing. And the prophetic picture is that they would come to this pasture, this, this hill where it's flourishing, and they would start to flourish. And that milk would start to flow. I love the fact of new wine. The, the thing with new wine is, is, is in the Bible, there's, there's a whole lot of stuff about wine. You know, it's a, it's a sign of, of, the, of the new to come. It's a sign like we, we read in Matthew chapter 9 of, of the old wineskins and the new wineskins. You can't put new wine in old, old wineskins. We, we look at this as a sign but it also a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And I think, man, God, if all we do this year is, is create an atmosphere for, for new wine, for the Holy Spirit to be poured out, how powerful would this place be? How powerful would our lives be? How powerful would our community start to be affected by a new wine that wants to flow out? Not just to us, not just in us, but through us. Because the new wine needs to not just stop at coming to you. You like see it, you're like, man, that's cool. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Jesus. You're like, cheer, bro. That's awesome. But then the next step is like, it's now in me. I can feel it and it, it's making me alive. And man, I just, I, I feel like I'm, I'm stronger and better than everyone else. Yeah, because it's in me. But everyone else will start going, oh, can you share? Like, can I have some of that? Like, I think a lot of Christians stop at that point because they've got their needs met or their wants met, and now I can just live my life as cool as I want. But actually, the next step is how do we help other people? How does it flow through us so that we can be commissioned, so that we can be sent out people to see our transformation happen in this amazing city that we live or wherever you're from. This isn't just a message for Equippers Topo. If you've come from another place overseas around New Zealand, this is a message for you too. That I'm praying that new wine would flow to you and in you and through you this year, wherever you've come from. (coughs) See, new wine looks like this, joy for every heavy burden. Peace for every anxiety or stress. Celebration where there is mourning. Blessing and multiplication taking place in your life. That is what new wine looks like. That is what the kingdom of heaven coming near to us looks like. Are you excited? Are you ready to take a hold of everything God has for you this year? Not just in the bigness of what God wants for you, but actually in the small Come in close. Draw in close. Because God wants us in that space of intimacy for Him to release that. I want to declare that over you this morning new wine. New wine. Fresh mindsets. A fresh perception of who God is. Fresh revelation, fresh relationship with Him. Because God wants to do something, but not in the future. He wants to do it now. I really believe that this is a now season for us as a church. We're in a now season. There's been years that we've just had to hold back a little bit. Because, firstly, I've been a bit scared. (laughs) You know when God tells you something? And it's far beyond what your brain can comprehend. I've been there for the last five years, all right? I'm just letting you know. 
But the only reason you can tell it's God is because you can't comprehend it. Because if it was just you, you'd be able to sort of lock it into your brain. And you'd be like, yep, God, this is what I feel like you want to do with me this year. And if you've got it all figured out, you've actually factored God out of your whole plan. You've factored God out of your whole 2023 if you haven't actually thought outside the box. Why? Because his, his ways are higher. His thoughts are higher. Everything about him is higher than us. And so if you've locked God into a little box for this year, you've, you've got it wrong. You need to branch out a little. Break those mindsets. God wants to do something now in families, in marriages, in our workplaces, in schools. The hills will flow with milk. The prosperity, the, the, the provision that God wants to birth out of your life, out of our lives, is going to flow like milk and honey, like promised land type stuff. That people are going to look and go, why is it so good for you? It's because of who I'm close to. Not because of what I'm doing, but it's because of who I'm close to. As we draw near to him, he draws near to us. See, John 10 puts it that he wants to give us life and life abundant. He wants to give us life in abundance. Are you living in abundance right now? If you're not, get close to God because he promises you to live in abundance. An abundance of joy. An abundance of everything that you need. Ephesians 3.20 says he can do immeasurably more than we can ask, think, or imagine. But what? According to his purpose. Not according to our lack. Not in, according to our skills or good looks or whatever you hold dear to yourself. It's according to his purpose. He's the one that brings it to pass. What is 2023? look like with you living in the kingdom of God? What does 2023 look like with you drawing in close? What does it look like for you to encounter Jesus at another level? Because that's my prayer for you this year, is that you would not just encounter the band not just encounter a great hosting team or hospitality team or kids team or whatever makes up church on a Sunday, but that you would encounter Jesus that would transform your life because that is what we're about as a church. We're not just some social club that meet, although we are good friends and we love each other's company. Greater than that, my prayer every Sunday is, God, let someone encounter your presence afresh today. God, let someone be transformed by the power of your presence, just like I have been transformed. Just like I have been transformed. And no one's exempt from that. I had to, I had to learn confidence in myself. I was a confident boy on the outside, but on the inside, I was riddled with insecurity. Why? Because I'm from Kaitaia. <laughs> the smallest of the small, the best place ever. That's right, Maria. If you're from Kaitaia, whoop. I was born and raised there. But I remember thinking, God, how can you do anything with me? I'm just a nobody. I'm just a, you know, I'm just the third child of six kids. Just in the middle, not even the oldest or the youngest. I wish I was the youngest. You get so much, like, you know, get spoiled. I mean, look at Jaira, our third child. But I remember doubting myself so much, and, and God just said, It's not about your gifts and abilities, it's about your character. It's about your character, it's about intimacy. It's about how you can draw near to me so that I can whisper the things I have in store for you. If you're just waiting for the next prophet to jump on stage to finally pick you out and say a prophetic word over you, it's probably not going to happen because God's got it stored up as a whisper for you. If you're in a crowd 
you won't be able to hear the whisper of heaven. You need to get in close. You need to to draw in back to the quiet place so that you can only hear God's voice. If that's, I said to God, I said, God, I, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to pray for people and see people healed. I don't know how to do that, God. He says, you don't have to do the healing part. You just have to open your mouth. You just have to have the faith. You just have to allow me to to work through you to be able to see the miracles that you've been praying for, to see the miracles that you've been dreaming about. I was frustrated on on the second. I was a little bit sick. God woke me up at five o'clock when Teddy went to the gym and I pushed snooze. And it was this amazing revelation, probably what I would have preached today, but it doesn't, it's irrelevant now. But I looked down at my phone and my phone didn't charge. So I couldn't have any notes to write stuff down. And I just, I was like, God, what are you talking to me? And it was amazing what he was, and I woke up and I flip and forgot. I'm like, God, can you just remind me at some point what that amazing revelation was? Because it woke me up to the point where I was excited. I was like, man, this year is going to be epic. This year is going to be, and I forgot it. See, if I don't write things down, I'm, I'm going to forget it. Isn't that right, Susie? No, I know your name, Teddy. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Come back, Holy Spirit. No. But can you make that your, not a destination, but your whole sense of being this year is to draw in close. A lot of your problems will be solved if you just draw it in close. A lot of your anxiety would disappear if you just draw in close. A lot of that depression, a lot of that things that, that actually is just fear, it'll be gone if you just draw in close. I want to prophesy that over us this year that, that equip us topo, we're going to be good at drawing in close. Equippers Topol, we are good at drawing in close. We are good at intimacy. We are good at not just praying for the sick and seeing them healed, but actually getting an intimacy with God that that's where the wine flows from. That's where the milk starts to flow from. That's where the dry places start to flow with water because of our intimacy with God. You are not going to make it this year if you don't have an intimate relationship with God. 2023, you will not make it. Because where where the enemy tries to come and steal, kill and destroy, and he's good at that, right? He's tried to take us out many times, every single one of us. But we don't focus on that part. We focus on the Jesus part. That actually as we draw near to him, He's the one that brings life and life abundantly.